guys, welcome to the homestead. So we're going to do something a little bit different today. About a year ago, I did a video talking about how um, uh, vehicles were basically just not being paid for because of all the stimulus that came out. People were buying cars, making one or two payments, if that, and then just, you know, not paying anymore. And how um, th there was a video that was put out by a guy, oh, I can't remember, Lucky Lopez, Lucky Lopez, who is ba it's a dealership based in Las Vegas, and Daniel D. Martino Booth, who um, I highly recommend subscribing to her channel. They were talking about all of these car owners or car buyers who they didn't really own it, <laughs> own anything, but they were make they weren't making payments on their vehicles. They were buying vehicles and just not making payments, and that there was a huge repo man boom that was coming and the banks were seriously in trouble because of this because these banks are stuck with these vehicles they're stuck with these auto loans and nobody's paying on the loans meanwhile the repo men and repo companies were buying acres and acres and acres of land and buying brand new trucks and brand new equipment because they were getting ready to, because they were ramping up knowing this was coming, that they were going to be out there getting all of these vehicles back and they needed somewhere to put the, the vehicles once they repo them. And so they're buying these vast acre, acreage of fields to be able to put all these vehicles once they, they take them back for the bank until the bank can decide what to do with them, you know, get them cleaned up, get them at auction. And because of that, I said that there's going to come a time where there's going to be a vehicle price collapse. And because the vehicles right now, even used vehicles are still insanely priced, absolutely insanely priced. If you have to buy a vehicle, I really feel sorry for you because there is a collapse coming. The reason it hasn't happened yet is because the banks don't want to take the loss. Again, Lucky Lopez on his channel, who, who I am subscribed to, uh, I just keep up with him because he's a dealership and he kind of gives you behind the scenes stuff of what's going on in the market all the time. That time is coming. The banks just don't want to take the loss right now. They're trying to wait, hoping circumstances, praying circumstances are going to change so that they don't have to take that loss. But it's coming. <laughs> there's no way out of this. There is no way out of this. We're going to talk about this today. So um, there's been a lot of channels, up and coming channels like this one. We're going to watch this video. This video has got like 9 million views. I'm subscribed to this guy as well. And they are making an absolute killing on YouTube, uh, showing all of these repos that are happening out there because the repo cop apocalypse is happening. It's started. Watch this video. So he's putting down his little trap. So he's getting ready to pull it. Now we're going to talk about this here for a second. He's backing. He's going to back into this car wash. Now, Right there, hold on, he's gonna zoom, it's gonna zoom in. See, it's a Zappy's auto wash. So he's at a car wash. He's gonna pull in. <laughs> That's so funny. Now, keep it that guy right there. Keep an eye on you're gonna see him in a minute. Look at that. Just back up and go. Off he goes. Now watch this. I hear the guy yelling. There he is right there. What are you doing with my car? It's not your car, dummy. You didn't pay for it. Um, all right, so he's pulling out and <laughs> he's still running behind him on the street. Now, a couple things here. How did this repo man know to go to this car wash? I I mean, does he following? I mean, he's at a car wash. He's not at his house. I mean, normally you think, you know, the repo man's going to be out looking at your job. Maybe he has that information from the bank. He has the address to your home. So he's going to be looking at these places. How did he know to go to the car wash? How did he know? He must be getting GPS information from the vehicle company from the bank who's feeding him information of where that car is located and he's watching that on his map he's just driving around town looking for the low-hanging fruit that is made available and picking it up and going and some of these people uh, if you watch the channel go to great lengths because they know that the repo man is out looking for him so they go to great lengths to try to hide their vehicles and so he's out there i'm assuming getting GPS information from the bank. If you know how he's doing that, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. I'm assuming it's GPS information, location information. So anyway, you know that guy, he's running after that car because, you know, he's just getting up. He's getting, you know, you know, when you go to the car wash, you get, you go up to the thing, you get tokens and you, or you, I call them tokens or quarters, but really to be honest, they're not 
money. <laughs> it's just tokens. And you go up and you get the, your soap and you pay for your time on the car wash and your vacuum time and whatever else you're going to get. And so, you know, his probably his wallet is in the car. His cell phone is in the car. He's got his st- personal items. Maybe his work stuff is in the car. And it just drove away. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. That car is going to sit out there in a field somewhere or in a, in a lot somewhere until, you know, it gets... I don't know what what recourse do you have if something you know extremely valuable is left in that car. I mean, does the guy check to make sure there's like not a baby seat in the back? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, all that all it's funny, it's hilarious because the reality is this is the thing that we have gotten ourselves into, and it's one of the things I talk about when I talk about Genesis Gold Group. Even is because we've lived beyond our means. We have no moral compass anymore. It's not a big deal to us to go to a dealership plop down a couple thousand dollars that Uncle Joey B gave us and you know for stimulus and then to just not pay any more money on that and think it's okay. That's stealing. That's showing a lack of a moral compass. That's not everything I want to show you today. Let's check this out. This article over at Bloomberg News, car owners fall behind on payments at highest rate on record. The risk of vehicle repossession is rising for many Americans facing a budget crunch. People just aren't paying their bills. Uh, this is Bloomberg News, so it's not going to let me read the whole article, uh, but it just gives you, you know, what's up, you know, what's happening. It says Americans are falling behind on their auto loans at the highest rate in nearly three decades, with interest rate hikes making newer loans more expensive. Millions of car owners are struggling to afford their payments. Again, something I talked about and predicted on this channel about a year ago. I said over a year ago, in fact, that uh, this was going to happen. And at some point, the prices of vehicles are going to come down. It's just a matter of when the banks want to take their big L. And they're going to have to take an L. It's just there's no other way around it. Okay, so that it's going to happen at some point. Let's go to the next article. Over at the Telegraph, again, you can't read this article, but I did find it somewhere else. It says electric cars risk becoming uninsurable. Difficulty pricing battery repairs, forcing insurers to refuse to cover. So this is something that you're seeing an awful lot more uh, coming up in the industry. And that's the fact that these insurance companies are not going to cover these vehicles. And if you, they do cover them, you're going to pay insane amounts of money. Absolutely insane amounts of money because they, these, they're finding now that if you get in a wreck with one of these things, and we're going to read the article, if you get in a, just a small fender bender, it may affect the battery of the vehicle so that it causes a fire. And not only that, but everything in these vehicles is so expensive to manufacture and so expensive to, to replace that the, it, you're paying insane amounts of money. Now, I'm going to give you my advice at the end of this video, okay? I'm not, we're just not going to talk doom and gloom. I'm going to give you some, you know, some, some, some direct, you know, marching orders on some things you can do to mitigate what's, what's coming. It's not here yet, but I'm telling you, I predicted over a year ago this was going to happen, and it's happening right now. It says, experts warn that EVs are being written off after minor bumps because of the cost and complexity of fixing their batteries. And it's not just the batteries, it's everything else. Guys, this is unsustainable. What you're doing is you're taking a product and you're forcing the market to use this product. This is not how the free market system works. A free market system works as such. Someone comes up with an idea, it's a great idea, and everyone buys and uses it. Okay, and those who with, with bad ideas, with poor ideas, they just don't get picked up, and they don't. No one, no one buys it. But here is the idea that the the world is ending, climate change is going to kill us all, and so we're going to force you to use these horrible products that are unsustainable in every measure that you know imaginable. You cannot. You would have to turn the earth inside out to get all of the minerals and all of the metals to make this infrastructure and to make these vehicles for everyone to have. It's not ju- it's just not there. It's impossible. So what is the result? Oh, well, we just won't let people have cars anymore. Well, that's not going to work either because you're going to take away a certain amount of freedom and um, flexibility for people that they've always had. It's, it's ingrained in them and you're going to take that away? No. You're going to have a very angry population. It's not going to B, you know, well, you just won't have your car and you'll be happy. That's not going to happen. You know, that, that there are other cultures around this planet who don't, everyone doesn't have a vehicle, you know, places in China or places in Europe where everyone takes the train or the tube or whatever you want to call it. And they're fine with that. But this is America. 
here we don't do unless you're living in the city in New York. Um, everyone has a car. Everyone has that freedom, that vehicle. And so you, you, that's just not going to happen. And we're not going to buy the, these high priced things is not sustainable. So let's go to the article. Um, I'll zoom in here. This just came out the other day, uh, three days ago. Electric cars risk becoming effectively uninsurable as analysts struggle to put a price on battery repairs. The researcher for the car insurance industry has said, Jonathan Hewitt, chief executive of Thatcham Research, the Motors Insurers Automotive Research Center, said a lack of insight and understanding about the cost of repairing damaged electric car batteries was pushing up premiums and resulting in some providers declining declining to provide coverage altogether. Now, this is, in, this is in Great Britain, but it's happening here too. Electric cars can be particularly expensive to repair, costing around a quarter more to fix on average than a petrol or diesel vehicle. Experts have previously warned electric vehicles are being written off after minor bumps because of the cost and complex, complexity of fixing their batteries. The challenge is that we have no way of understanding whether the battery has been compromised or damaged in any way. Again, this goes back to a bad product, a poor product. You mean after a fender bender, the battery, something that is instrumental to the functioning of the car, I have no way of doing any sort of diagnostic to see if that battery is damaged? Well, then you have a bad product. That's just, that's just it. The threat of thermal run runaway means that a catastrophic fire can take place if the cells of the battery have been damaged in a collision. So at that point, now you're at a total, you're at a total loss anyway, because if you do have a thermal runway, the, the, you're going to have to replace the whole car anyway. So the insurance company is like, what's the point? If you get in a small fender bender and you, the battery is damaged and now you have a threat of thermal runaway, the whole thing is scrapped for a small fender bender. This is a bad product. You remember the days when you actually drove vehicles made of metal and a small fender bender wasn't a big deal. <laughs> Those days, that ship has sailed. Okay, what we're struggling to understand at the moment is how we approach that diagnostic technique. It's like a doctor trying to understand what's wrong with you without any notes or an x-ray. So again, this is something that is not sustainable. Okay, uh, then going over to the Wall Street Journal, um, I do have this um, pulled up. I, I got past their paywall. It's getting too expensive to have fun. Prices for concert tickets and amusement park entries have ballooned. Um, the rising cost of fun is becoming a drag. Ticket prices for live entertainment events from Taylor Swift concerts to National Football League games and high-season Disney theme park visits rose at a startling rate this year, triggering a phenomenon that analysts have dubbed funflation. This is inflation. They're just trying to put a spin on it. Uh, families coughed up large sums saved during the pandemic to attend live events in parks this year. Friends treated themselves to memorable performances and mothers took their daughters to stadiums packed with friendship bracelet clad concert goers to see Swift's era tour. Now some Americans are feeling tapped out. But yeah, because you're spending your money on garbage. You're spending your money on frivolousness. This is just absolute insane. Uh, uh, yeah, anyway, so it goes on and on to say that it's just too expensive to have fun these days. And I mean, there's a, a Silver Dollar City, which is in the Ozarks here, you know, near Branson. I uh, would love to be able to take my kids there. But I'm like, during the pandemic, they kind of lowered the prices because they weren't getting anyone to show up. And, you know, they had all these masks. People weren't wanting to go out. Anywhere. Everyone was scared. And um, now they've raised the prices back up to where it was. It's ridiculous. I'm not, I'm not paying that. It's just maybe, I mean... I think everyone thinks because you're on YouTube, you must be swimming in money. <laughs> YouTube doesn't pay <laughs> what you think it pays. Um, and so that's why I have some sponsors, you know. But it's like Silver Dollar City and these theme parks is ridiculous. You know, it's like a Christian-based theme park. But for, you know, the Joel Osteen Christians, I guess. <laughs> It's like those kind of Christians can go and have fun. But everyone else, we're going to go, you know, hiking in the woods and have fun. You know, anyway, um, all that to say... This inflation is not slowing down. It's going to get worse. It's happening. Now, going back to your marching orders, it would behoove you, as my one of my teachers in high school used to say, it would behoove you to go ahead and make sure you you have a vehicle that is paid off, it's out of debt, and it's an older vehicle. It's not something that is modern, meaning all of these gadgets and tech, tech, all this latest technology, all that stuff. If you have some older vehicles, hold on to those vehicles. Do what you can to at some point get those up and running. I have um, two machines on my property I'm never going to let go. 
I have a 1970s um, Massey Ferguson tractor. It has a great, amazing diesel engine that'll never wear out, uh, but it'll run forever. And then I have a 22R Toyota pickup 1982 22R engine. That thing will run forever. That's why you see those terrorists in Afghanistan driving around in those things because it's the old Hilux, Hilux version that's not allowed in the U.S. anymore. And that thing will run forever. And so, um, I, I'm at some point I have I could barter and trade to get those things up and running again if I needed to. I can figure that out. There are people who know things in my area. I can get that knowledge and bring them over and get that working again. My point being is that if you have vehicles like that, even my I have a 2014 Forerunner. I'm trying to make sure that thing lasts forever, and Forerunners will last forever. Get a good vehicle, treat it well, pay it off, and hold on to it because at some point um, they're they're going to. I think it depends on how how much resolve the government has. They may ban new vehicles the way we have known them all our lives from ever being made again and force people to get into these electric technology disasters, or there will be a huge vehicle apocalypse and prices will dive. You'll be able to afford good stuff again, and um, the industry will correct itself, and the free market will again take over. At this point, it's up in the air. I don't know. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to circle the wagons on this and prepare for the worst and hope for the best. That's my advice to you. All right. What do you think? Leave a comment below. If you like the video, please hit that thumbs up before you go. That really means a lot to me. It means I haven't spent my time here just yakking at you and uh, you didn't get anything out of it. So <laughs> please leave a like and a comment below for the algorithm, rhythm and everyone will be happy. All right. Check out our merchandise over at teespring.com. You can find our stupid should hurt. If we had more hurt in this world, we'd have an awful, awful lot less electric vehicles. Uh, you can find that link in the description below and also our sponsor, Genesis Gold Group. If you have... Um, if you have money that's stored up in not physical metals and you want to figure out a way to have some physical metals, they're the guys to help you. You can find the link in the description below. It's pinned in the comments. Check it out. All right. See you next time in the homestead. Bye. If you've watched my channel, you know that I'm a fan of owning precious metals in times of economic turmoil. The reason being is because I'm an avid reader of history. One of the biggest objections to buying precious metals that I get goes something like this. Why buy precious metals? After all, you can't eat gold and silver. Actually, this is incorrect. Never has there been a time throughout all of human history where a producer of food has turned down the use of gold and silver when trying to make a sale. Never, not once. Gold and silver have always been used when fiat money fails and fiat money always eventually fails. There are countless times in history where governments hard up for real money took silver and copper coins from the past and then placed a countermark on the coin and then placed that old coin back into circulation. It didn't matter that it was an old coin of a different time and place. What mattered was the metal content. In the 1820s, the farmers in the German town of Notzheim would find Roman silver denarii so often in their fields when plowing that they would save them and use them to buy beer at the local tavern. In the 1840s, around the French town of Usur, Roman silver and gold coins were so numerous that people used them to pay bakers, butchers, and other merchants for their food goods. These are coins that were long gone in official circulation from the Roman Empire, but people use them anyway to pay for food even above their own official state-issued currency. Yes, you can eat gold and silver because gold and silver always, always buys food. If you have fiat paper savings banked away and you want to find a more historically reliable way to safeguard that wealth, this website can help you. AmericanGoldEscape.com gives you information and a way to reach out so that an expert can help you and show you how to escape. We are over $33 trillion in debt and rising rapidly. There is no saving this sinking ship. Visit AmericanGoldEscape.com to learn more. Linked in the description below. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>